Today we embark on a new journey, a journey to draw a fantasy map. And I'm talking about a really good looking and believable fantasy map. And yeah, I think a good fantasy world is believable in a weird fantasy sort of way. So here in part one of how to draw a fantasy map, we're going to be going through the process of shaping coastlines or land masses for your map. In the first part of the video, I'll be sharing various tips and a few different methods for generating the shapes of your land masses. And in the second half of the video, we will actually be putting pencil to paper and drawing an entirely new fantasy map, starting a whole new fantasy world together, you and me. Got my pencil, got my paper, I've got my delicious frijoles pintos. Let's do this. Hi everybody, Nate here and welcome to WASD 20, a channel about tabletop RPGs and fantasy maps. Now here in this series, I'm going to be essentially redoing a series that I started almost four years ago now about how to draw a fantasy map. In that series, you can actually see me drawing my very first fantasy map and a lot of people use that as a model and that's really cool and all, but I thought, you know what, I can do better than that. Now I've got about four years of experience under my belt. I've learned a lot about geography and the science of making maps as well as a lot of artistic techniques for making better looking maps. So in this series, I hope to share that all with you and still make it very approachable and beginner friendly. This is still a good starting place. Don't feel like you have to go back to that series if you're new here. So the first thing we're going to consider together is what shape do you want your land masses to be? That's a question for you. There is no right answer to that question. Do you want your map to be very land heavy with very little water, sort of an inland area? Do you want it to be sea heavy, like a collection of small islands and archipelago, something like Hawaii or the Philippines? Or do you want your map to be kind of a balance? And we're gonna be going for more of the balanced approach today. I'm gonna to be drawing essentially what amounts to a continent with some islands around it. And for me, it's not gonna be a very big continent because I prefer to kind of start small and keep the scope manageable in terms of the world building of this space. And that brings up another question, and that's what is the scale of your map? Will the people living in the cities and towns on your map be familiar with this entire region? Is it a fantasy world in the sense that this is their known world? Or do you wanna go huge and expansive and start with an entire globe, a series of continents, or one mega continent? This is all up to you, but honestly, there's nothing wrong with just picking up your pencil and starting to draw something and seeing what happens. Speaking of just starting, I will be putting links to all the tools and resources that I'm using for this video down in the video description, but know that you don't really need anything. A sheet of printer paper and a ballpoint pen or any old pencil will do just fine. Still, if you're curious about some of the pencils and paper and other tools that I use on a daily basis when I'm drawing maps, you can definitely check those out. So now that we've covered a few considerations in terms of what kind of map you're going for, let's go ahead and cover some different ways to shape your coastlines or generate your land masses. The first is, of course, the bean method. So I've gotten a bit of criticism over the years for people saying like, why are you letting your beans shape your map? How lazy of you. Don't you have any creativity in you to shape your own coastline? But I think they missed the point. The point is that you're supposed to create your own coastline and shape it yourself using the beans. Now, you could just scatter them like you're rolling dice and let that determine the layout of your map. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But I usually use them to shape them myself. I move them around into shapes that I think look good. And it's a way for me to avoid putting pencil to paper too soon and avoid lots of needless erasing. And it just allows you to be more playful with the shapes of your map. So here's kind of a landmass that I'm going for. And then maybe I say, I think I'm going to break off a little island down here. And you can just kind of play around with that and uh, move them around until you get shapes that you like. And then when you're tracing them, you can do so pretty roughly. And then go back, sweep the beans off the paper, and go back and refine them. Now, it absolutely does not have to be beans. It could be rice, it could be lentils, it could be Cheerios, it could be anything really, but you know, you probably don't wanna use canned beans. And you wanna make sure you're not using something that's gonna require a lot of cleanup. Like, uh, you know, Cheerios might leave a little more dust than dried beans, for example, but it's okay, it's manageable, you can sweep it off. We're gonna talk about a couple other methods for generating coastlines, but first I wanna give a quick thank you to my sponsor for this video, World Anvil. World Anvil is an amazing tool that helps game masters and world builders of all kinds to keep all their world information, maps, visuals, story arcs, and timelines organized in one place. 
and World Anvil just recently announced their new Sage tier, which will allow creators to monetize their content, providing exclusive access at tiered levels you set, creating an easy way to engage fans and followers. Whether you're an artist, an author, a game master, or an RPG content creator, the Sage tier unlocks a world of new possibility for creators to support themselves through their creations. You can sign up for a free account with loads of great features, go for a paid membership, which starts at $3 a month, or go all the way up to Sage for releasing professional content. Oh, and there's 20% off right now for my viewers on Master and Grandmaster accounts. Just use the code WASD20 and check out that link down in the video description. So in addition to using some kind of small object on your paper, there are a couple ways that you can do this digitally. And one is to take inspiration from real world land masses. So you can see that in this Photoshop image here, I have some real world land masses that I have dragged into Photoshop and I'm just moving around. I'm rotating them, I'm shrinking or stretching them moving them around until I get some shapes that I like. And this has the advantage of creating coastlines that will look realistic because they're based on real coastlines without being too spot on, especially if you're turning them upside down and rotating them. It's very unlikely that people are, people are going to be able to tell that, hey, that little square bit, that's Spain sticking out there or something like that. Now you might want to be really spot on and there's nothing wrong with that. I did have a client hire me once to draw them a fantasy version of Greece and it just looks like Greece as you can see here. But if you're trying to be creative and unique and someone's able to go, that looks just like Italy, then that's kind of annoying. Here's what I've found though. People will do that with anything you do. I've found that to be the case with so many maps that I've drawn completely from my own imagination as well. Or maybe I am unintentionally drawing inspiration from things I've seen, who knows. Now, what I'm showing you here is a really easy method if you are using Photoshop and you have a drawing tablet especially. A drawing tablet can be very expensive, like my, I don't know, $1,600 Wacom Cintiq that I have here. Or you can get a very cheap one for something like $50 to $100 for a smaller Intuos drawing tablet. That's going to be just fine. So if you're working on paper and you want to take inspiration from real world coastlines, then go ahead and just pull up a map of Google Earth or Google Maps, zoom around to different parts of the globe, and keep your pen and paper handy and draw things that inspire you. Zoom into this little part of Spain here and that coastline looks nice, and then we'll go to the Philippines and I like that little island there, and you get the idea. I've done that quite a bit and it just helps make sure you're getting some fairly realistic looking coastlines and I recommend zooming into parts of the earth that you'd like. Now there are some very similar methods, whether you're using Photoshop or a free program like GIMP and tracing them on a drawing tablet or whatever, or whether you're doing it on paper, you can take similar inspiration from other sources. One such source is Donjon's Fractal World Generator, which I really like. You can go on here, you can set some parameters and you can generate a world map and it gives you some really nice looking coastlines in my opinion. I usually, again, just take bits and pieces. I'm inspired by this little bit, so I'll draw that. I'm inspired by this other little bit, so I'll draw that too. Move around and find shapes that you like. And one last source I'll mention is tectonics.js. It's a tool I've mentioned several times, and it simulates plate tectonics. Now, the reality is, even if you are drawing a huge world map, you can probably draw your land masses first and retroactively decide which way the plates are moving. It will help you determine where mountains are likely to form. But personally, I don't stress it that much. I don't find it very enjoyable or life-giving, but if it brings you life, then go for it. You do you. So tectonics.js is really cool because it does simulate that kind of tectonic plate mass continent breakup. But I do find that you need to take a little more liberties with those coastlines because they're not super detailed and they're quite consistently angular. Lastly, get inspired by anything around you for your coastline shapes. You can look at clouds, for example. I had a patron the other day tell me that he does that, and I think that's great. Look at the clouds, and if you don't like the shape you're seeing, just wait a couple seconds for the wind to blow it a little differently and draw what you're seeing up there in the sky. I've even heard about people finding a rusty bit of metal and taking some inspiration from the shape of the rust. Anything goes, take inspiration from things around you, and go with what you think looks good. All right, so we've finally gotten to the point where we're gonna be drawing a map together here. So for this, I'm actually gonna be using a combination method. Uh, what I did find is I found a section of that fractal world generator map that we made in Donjon that I really liked the look of. And what I did is I put the beans on the paper roughly in the location of the land masses I liked. We're gonna be doing two main land masses. And, um, and then I just kind of traced them roughly uh, around the beans. 
So that was what I did with just my light pencil here. I've got a 2H pencil, so some pretty hard lead. And, uh, but it doesn't matter what you're using. So I'm gonna push the beans off now and I can maybe just faintly see what I've got here. And now I'm gonna go in and I'm going to refine these lines based on what I'm looking at on my computer screen from Don John. So this landmass here, we're gonna make. And I'm just using pencil here today and the actual ink work might be a little ways off. When you're working on paper, I have learned the hard way many times that it's good to hold off on the ink um, if you want a nice polished map till uh, quite a ways in. And actually, as I'm doing this, I'm thinking I'm, I'm still gonna keep it pretty light. I might even do three passes with a pencil just cause I'm, I'm a perfectionist, guys. Another thing to consider when you're drawing a map is saving some space around the edges. You don't want to fill the whole thing because it is really nice, I think, to save some space for a compass rose, maybe a title for your map, maybe a scale, maybe even a border and some of those accessories. All right, now we're gonna move on to the second landmass here. Now I'm just kind of making it up here because my uh, continent on Donjon does not really have a clearly defined bottom. No offense, I mean, I could have maybe stated that better. So one thing I like to do is, I like to have some really craggy areas, but if it was all shaped like this right here all the way around. To me, that doesn't look very realistic. It's too consistent. Um, so I like to have some smoother areas. So you can see that this right here, I drew pretty smooth and I'm okay with that. The trap that I've often fallen into is making a map that's you know very consistent. Like I drew this one out here that's just kind of like, yeah, it's easy to fall into that rhythm uh, when you're doing it. And uh, I don't like to do that. I like to try to avoid that if at all possible. We'll make a little kind of inlet here. Okay, and I think I, I like the way that's looking. So I'll take my eraser and erase some of the things that I didn't like too much. From my initial rough lines. I think we've got it close enough to a solid coastline here. I like what I'm seeing so far. And now we're gonna do some islands. So a couple uh, considerations for islands. One is, you know, we often see chains of island. So um, maybe we would see one right here. Well, let's see, where would we see maybe a chain of islands? I think right here is actually a really good spot. I like to sometimes pick those sort of peninsulas that sticking out a bit there and then go in and we'll make one kind of longer island here. And those are all maybe a little too similarly shaped, so let's vary it a bit. There we go, nice little chain of islands there. And we'll do a few other scattered islands here and there as well. Just kind of making random shapes. Let's 
once in a while it's nice to do just like a little tiny one here. It just gives this feeling of, of extreme detail once you start doing a few of these. Little small islands. Do a bigger one down here. In case you're wondering what kind of paper I'm using, I'm just using this nine by 12 sketch pad here, nothing fancy. I've got a few of these around. All right, now in terms of what we will eventually be doing to our coastline to really make it look complete, when we ink it, I usually make a thick, thicker line on the, the southern portion of the map. And you can see me doing that a little bit here. And then I like to go around and make some wavy effects as well. Uh, but it's always a good idea to kind of keep on taking more passes and adding lots of little details. So, um, you know, I'm gonna go ahead and just do it a little bit more here. We're just gonna add some little, um, but it, it all depends how detailed you want it to look. You know, sometimes you don't want it to look overly uh, busy. Uh, you just want to get some basic shapes down. So that's, it's a stylistic choice often as much as it is um, a geographic choice because sometimes, you know, the real geography, if you look at maps online, you can look at many maps of a similar area and they all might have diff varying degrees of definition. And uh, it's just kind of how much you want, what's pleasing to your eye and uh, how is your map meant to be viewed. If this is gonna be something you're blowing up, you, you wanna include more detail. Um, if it's gonna be something that's viewed only at this size, you can probably get away with a little less detail. All right, but I really like what I'm seeing here. I hope you guys have found this one useful. All right, so in the next video, I mentioned we're gonna be doing some planning so that we can get things in place. One of the reasons I'm using pencil and I'm not jumping right into inking my coastline right now is because I like to plan things out. For example, if we're gonna have a city or town right here, it's gonna be a bit of a pain to label that city if I've already got my ink on my coastline there because I usually like to put my labels right below the settlement and then I like to leave the coastline uninked there so it's not so busy and so it makes my labels more legible. So that's one of the reasons we're holding off on that and we're gonna be planning things out really well next time before we lay any ink down. Getting those mountain locations, getting our lakes and rivers, getting our forests and other geographic features like deserts or possibly swamps and things like that. All right, everybody, that's all for this one. I wanna thank World Anvil once again for sponsoring this video. And I wanna give a huge thank you to my patrons. Patrons are people who support this channel on a monthly basis. They are making it happen for me here and keeping the lights on and I really, really appreciate it. If you wanna join with them, there's also some pretty cool rewards including weekly map drawing live streams and quarterly encounter maps hand drawn by me that I give you copies of. So if you like what I'm doing here and you can afford a few bucks a month, I would greatly appreciate it. You can learn more at patreon.com slash WASD20. Lastly, thank you all so much for watching. Everybody take care, you'll see me again very soon.